Hello, I'm back with a new video and in this one we'll be creating a Windows XP virtual machine with GPU pass-through. Before we get started, this guide won't work on systems with Intel's integrated GPUs unless you patch the kernel with the VGA Arbiter patch. It should work just fine on Ryzen or Intel's HEDD platform or anything that doesn't have or doesn't use the Intel iGPU. For the demonstration, I'll be using my usual Ryzen 5 1600 on an X470 motherboard. For the host, I'll be using Radeon 6350 in the bottom slot. I'll be also passing through a USB expansion PCI Express card. This one, I reviewed it earlier. I'll leave the link in the video description. You can buy it on eBay or AliExpress. It's uh, under $40 normally. It's a quad controller card uh, and each one of the ports uh, ends up in its own IOMMU group. So it's pretty good. It also has Windows XP drivers, Windows 7 and Windows 10 too on the CD that comes with it. So it's pretty good. I was having some issues when I tried to do individual USB device pass through some random disconnects. So I opted out for a controller, a USB controller. And I always recommend passing through an entire controller. Your experience will always be better using it, doing it that way. Lastly, on the, in the top slot, you see a GTX 980, and that's pretty much the latest GPU that still has Windows XP drivers available. And I'll leave those, leave a link to them in the video description. As with any other GPU pass-through, the graphics card you intend to assign to your virtual machine needs to be bound to the VFIO-PCI, and you can follow any guides, either my guides or any other available guides on the internet to do that. Okay, so now we'll open Virtual Machine Manager and we'll create a new virtual machine. We'll use an ISO image of Windows XP and I have one. So I recommend using the Service Pack 2 at least just because some of the drivers you'll be installing might have some dependencies that are already available in the service pack two or three. So recommend that. So next I'll give it two gigs of RAM. Let's give it four cores, 20 gigs should be enough, but you can give it more and let's customize it. Okay. So you'll, I will recommend sticking to the I 440 chipset and you will be using BIOS, not UEFI for this one. Just because the support in Windows XP isn't there for UEFI. So always information, CPUs, and you can leave it be or you can uh, change it right here. Let's give it one socket, four cores. And you can even change this to something more contemporary like a port to duo and allocate all four cores, not only one of them. So that should be good. Memory, boot options, let's boot, let's boot from the CD-ROM drive. We can leave this one checked. The network card, I recommend using, well, this one. Uh, it has XP drivers or it's supported by Windows XP. It's only 100 megs but it's not the end of the world for this purpose. I wouldn't use it to do any serious online work anyway. It's Windows XP, it's kind of outdated. And for now, we'll leave everything be. So let's get this started and we'll just follow all the prompts and I'll see you when this is finished. Okay, so now we finished installing Windows XP and now let's start customizing it a bit. So first we'll add the USB controller card under PCI host devices and right here, from here to here, that's the individual controllers and I'll add all of them. Okay. So I got that. Next we'll need to get the drivers and I just put them on a USB stick right here and I'll just pass that 
to the US uh, to the virtual machine. So I had hardware and the USB host device and Kingston USB disk 3.0. So now let's launch it. Here we are. Let's open this. And it will take a bit for the USB disk to show up. Okay, here it is. Let's open it up. And first, let's install Service Pack 3. Next, I'll install the .NET 3.5 framework. I think uh, the NVIDIA driver needed it. Okay, and lastly, I will install the drivers for the USB controllers. And the reason is because once you do pass through, you won't be able to share mouse and keyboard between the host and the guest like this, right? You will lose that ability. And unless you go with EV dev, uh, you will need a dedicated mouse and keyboard. We got the controller updated. I mean the driver for the controller installed. Let's turn it off. Okay, now let's make sure that it actually does work. So I'll start it again. And I'll just make sure that the additional mouse that's plugged into the USB PCI Express USB card is working. Okay, so I'm this mouse works. And the other mouse works too. So I have three, I mean, I have two mice, one connected directly to the guest and one connected to the host. So once we do pass through, we should be able to control that virtual machine with its own mouse. Perfect. So now we'll add the interesting part and that's the GPU. So when you are doing this, depending on what GPU, you have available for the guest operating system. Some of them, especially the older GPUs, might not uh, work after you shut down the virtual machine and the whole host uh, computer might need to be rebooted. So that's one option you might run into. Uh, the 980 seems to be working fine. I tried it with the GTX 480, not the RX 480, but the GT or GTX 580. And that one, wouldn't work once the virtual machine was shut down. I would have to reboot the host. So your mileage might vary, but uh, let's add the GPU. Add hardware under PCI host devices. We'll find the NVIDIA graphics card. And again, I already did the required steps to do pass through if you need to do them. Uh, you know, to bind the GPU to VFIO-PCI, you can follow my guide or somebody else's guide. It doesn't matter. It just needs to be bound to the VFIO-PCI driver. Okay, so that's here, but that's not all. The other steps we'll have to do, we'll have to remove the all the spice. So we'll remove display spice and QXL. That needs to be gone. We'll also get rid of the sound because we don't need it. And you could get rid of other stuff too, like the tablet, it's not necessary anymore. So next we'll have to edit Versh. So let's do that. And we'll do Versh, well sudo. Versh, edit, and then the name of the virtual machine. So win XP in my case right here well let's open this one win xp right here is the name enter let's use nano to keep it easy okay so we'll need to change the domain right here erase this and we'll go here and i'll leave this in the video description and we'll need to copy this line and paste it. 
And then what we are trying to do here, basically QEMU allows us to set the boot VGA uh, for the virtual machine. And that's what we are doing. So we will copy this and we'll scroll all the way to the end. And this will go right here. So that will make, this will make device zero, the boot VGA. I don't think we, it will be actually device zero for us because we added the USB controller prior to this. So it might end up being like device, there's four USB controllers we added and then there is the USB card. So it might be number five actually. Uh, it will give us an error if it's not if it's not it will it will give you an error and then you will have to change it later so it's not a big deal so you just have to count it so it will be like this zero one two three four and five should be our gpu so you just need to count it and if you change it later it might it will change again and you might just have to change uh, that number to something else, host dev, whatever. Okay, so we have that. And because it's an NVIDIA GPU, we'll have to work around error 43. So again, I'll leave this in the video description, but Arch Linux Wiki is your friend here. We will need to copy this and uh, put it between the Hyper-V tags. And then you will need to copy this and put it between the features tag. So let's put it after the Hyper-V statement right here and we'll paste it here. Okay, if we didn't make any mistakes, it should work. Control O, enter, control X. Okay, and as long as this doesn't give you any error, you should be fine. So now we should be able to boot our virtual machine to start it and we'll start with a it will be working on the monitor connected to the graphics card so I'll have to switch uh, the input to my capture card and you will you should see the Windows XP booting so the resolution to begin with won't be very good because we haven't installed the driver yet but our drivers should be on that USB drive we included earlier. So Windows XP driver. And as I said, I'll include it in the video description. Okay, so it looks like it started, booted just fine. Let's take a look at our control panel. Let's look at the system and the hardware, device manager. So yeah, our NVIDIA 980 is right there. Our QEMU disk is right there. The network, uh, the Realtek, uh, controller the emulated one works so if you don't want to install any drivers just do that and it works out of the box it's only 100 megs but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter at all so we should be able to go online I mean considering this is XP it's uh, you know your mileage might vary But yeah, it works. I mean, you won't be able to do too much with it because nothing else is really supported on Internet Explorer 6 anymore, but you know, it works. So if you want to play some games, you should have a 3D acceleration with that uh, pass-through GPU. So that's that for Windows XP and this guide should work for Windows 7. All the steps should be pretty much the same. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.